Hello, and today is about reading books, hard books, easy books, and just generally reading. And this is brought to you by myself reading. And I've got a good cup of tea with me out of my North Norfolk line and my North Yorkshire Moors coaster. And just to make this even more cheesy, we are being joined today by Fran. Fran the Phrenology Head. And if you know me, I've uh, on, on Instagram, I've been reading a lot more philosophy in the past month, especially Jean-Paul Sartre. And that got me wondering on why people find it so difficult to read philosophy and other books which don't seem like they should have a uh, problem reading. I often go up to somebody who's new to philosophy and, and I say to them, oh, you're, you're reading Nietzsche. And I've got Nietzsche here. And, and they say, yes, I'm reading him, but I'm not gaining any information from it. And I look at them and say, you will, yes, you're putting the cart before the horse right there because you're reading Nietzsche. Nietzsche is a philosopher who thinks you already know who that those people are. Hence, his books are so short because he expects you to already know who he's talking about. If he says something about like Hegel or Kant, and quotes them, he's not going to put a description of what the book is and who and what philosophies they stand for. So as well as reading this book, I've got to now read Hegel's book and Kant's book, just to name a few. And so that is why most people who begin a philosophy don't understand Nietzsche. But imagine it's not philosophy now. Imagine it's something like this. Murakami book. Now this is a large book. So why do people have trouble with this? It's because it's a large book. It's how to get through it in one sitting. And also being a large book, it's going to have a lot of detail and connotations, which you'll have to wean out. And so that's the basis of this video. I'm going to speak about how to read philosophy to an extent. I'm no professional at it but I'm also going to speak about how to get through large books and keep your interest in reading alive. And so that brings us on to the first thing, which is reading philosophy. Now I'm gonna try and explain this in the amount that I have here on this timer. So let's start it. Number one, all philosophy books are a conversation. And so you should treat it like that. Every branch of philosophy is a conversation between a philosopher to the next. Albert Camus doesn't write his own philosophy. He writes upon the foundations of another philosophy. To put that into simpler terms, it's basically like a bunch of philosophers in a room having conversations. One says, I think this. The other one says, I agree with that, but also disagree with that to a certain extent. And the conversation keeps going. And then by the end of it, we've got a whole different branch of subjects to when we started. So you can think of it as like Sigmund Freud placing in the centre this thought of the unconscious. And so then at the start of the century, he said that. Jean-Paul Sartre then said, well, I agree with that. In, in this book, The Imaginary, he also talks a lot about the brain. So he says, yes, I agree with that. There's the unconscious and the conscious, but there's also this in-between phase where we can see things that we don't see in the everyday life, nor in dreams. And I also agree, but life has no meaning. So why should I believe that I see this or don't? Albert Camus then said, well, yes, I leaving the point of the conscious and the unconscious, but I am going to focus more on this part of life has no meaning. And then so many more philosophers branch on from that and so on and so forth. And so when you read philosophy, you've also got to be doing the same. You have to have a conversation with the reader, with, uh, with the writer, I mean. So when you're making notes, and yes, this is something that I, I'm going to force you to do, rip this book apart. When you make your notes, what you want to do is kind of say it like a call and response. They say something, then you write your own opinion on it. They say something, you write your own opinion on it, and so on and so forth throughout the whole book. But the main essence of this video 
is how to read philosophy and how to actually get through it. And so I've got three examples of philosophy here. These three examples of philosophy, I have the myth of Sisyphus, Sartre's The Imagination, and Friedrich Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Three vastly different books, but all the same. So when reading Sartre, and if you're beginning, I do recommend you read Sartre because his books are quite lengthy. Not the lengthiest philosophy books, but somewhat lengthy, especially in Being and Nothingness. This is a monster of a book by him. But that's because he talks through what he's explaining. He will sit and probably say about two pages worth of this philosopher that he is speaking about. Just so that he thinks the reader understands. And that's why, if you're beginning, I recommend you read some Sartre. Because it's a great introduction to philosophy, but also it's just so easy to read. You can easily get through about 50 pages of this a day. Thus Spoke Zarathustra is another one. It is written by Friedrich Nietzsche. And it's a very difficult book to read. Purely because it's not written in the standard philosophical style. It's, it's written more as like uh, the Bible. A set of rules, uh, different phrases, different uh, different paragraphs. Each each one is completely different from the last. But they all tie into each other. But he doesn't talk about what he is uh, mostly talking about. If he quotes Hegel in this, he quotes Hegel. He says, Hegel says this. Now, you then don't know how that quote ties into what he's saying. Because you don't know the context of that quote. So he just assumes that you already know hegel's books so you know that oh hegel's philosophy is this so it ties into this so you need a brief understanding so even though it being quite short you kind of need a syntopicon with this to read about five other books with this and i, I did speak earlier about how to keep your morale up while you're reading philosophy because there was a time around, what, two, three years ago, when I, I would sit at, at, at my desk, uh, my chair over there, and I would look up at my shelf and say, boy, there's a lot of books I need to get through. And that was my mindset. I, I kept saying to myself, I need to get through these, not I get to go through these. And so it started to feel more like a chore to be reading rather than enjoying it. And so I devised this plan where for every two or three philosophy books that I read, I read a fiction book, a fiction book, Coraline or A Game of Thrones or something. But I don't annotate it. Whereas with these, I, I rip these books apart. But by the time I'm finished with these, uh, of course, I take good care of them, but by the time I finish these, some pages have uh, tabs in them, they're all scribbled over. But these ones I don't, the, the fiction. And that's because I read it for my enjoyment. Whereas with these, I read these for research and for these videos, as well as for some of my essays. But with the fiction, I read that just because I can. And it's something to keep my morale up. So... If you were to work every day without any weekends, you're going to get into this rut where you feel like you have to work. But if you have a couple of days off every week, you're going to feel more replenished when you go back into it. Like after the weekend, you're going to think, great, I now get to go back to work. I get to have a job. You're going to appreciate it more. And so that's why every now and again, you just need to calm down from what you're doing. And so now we've finished that, I'm going to bring us on to the next chapter, which is understanding philosophy. Now, as I stated earlier, I see a lot of people reading Nietzsche because it's those books that they've heard of on TikTok or Instagram. And it's those hundred philosophy books you should read before you die. And it's always stuff like good and evil or being and nothingness. And these books are great. 
but they're not for the beginner. No way. And it's odd to think that books have difficulty. It's words on a page. The only difficulty that there could be is, is in the length of it. But no, 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 even short books can have difficulty levels to them because, well, in the way that they're written, in the way that they're formulated, as I've already said with Nietzsche. And so understanding philosophy is a very difficult thing from reading philosophy. Now, Sartre has said in this book that I'm reading of the imaginary, words are not images. The function of the acoustic and optic phenomenon that is the word resembles nothing of that other physical phenomenon, the picture. And so what he's stating there is that merely reading is not understanding because a word is completely different from a picture. They're two different entities. So if I were to say that there's the moon in a sentence so john looked up at the big white grayish moon in the sky black so there's our great sentence and i'm guessing you imagined the words first you heard the words first and then imagined john looking up at this moon and so there are two different separations between the two you have to then read it then understand it to then see it and, and actually formulate it. And so that is the same with philosophy. You can't just sit back as I would with A Clergyman's Daughter by George Orwell. I can sit back, read it, have a drink with it and make some notes because again, it's a book, I, I, I make notes in them. But philosophy is completely different to that, such as the passing of time or growing up or the economy or stuff like that. Philosophy is telling you how to live a life or how to imagine life as being. So you have to sit down and imagine that you are talking to the to Sartre. So when I sit down in a cafe, I have to imagine that I'm sitting there reading this and think, if I was in Sartre's shoes, what? why would I have put that? Why? And what does he mean by that? And you've got to imagine you having this one-to-one -one conversation with him in your mind and then you, when you make your notes you have to then say instead of repeating what he's put because that's a waste of space when you make your notes i put them down the side here and a little arrow you've got to state what you think it means because just merely stating, let's say uh, again, that one, words are not images. Don't th write it like an essay as you would in middle school. Don't put down words are like, words are not images. Instead, they are like, no, because you're repeating yourself. It's a waste of space. Instead, put something like, it seems to be that the formulaic adversity of words are not equal to the image that they produce and what they must be seen as different and not individual. And on to the next part, which is big books. Now get rid of these things, pop them here, and we're going to bring in these. That was loud. So this. And this, this is actually surprisingly light. I remember buying this with my friend on my uh, 18th birthday. And I remember even saying, wow, for a hardback, it's surprisingly light. This is way heavier. I think this is around a kilo. This is like some 500 grams or something. It's really light. We have Sartre and Murakami. Two very different books. One's fiction. One's philosophy. This I would call academic fiction. You still need to make notes in it and you still need to understand it because there is a tale to be told in this. It's more about not how to annotate books, but how to read large books. Now, when sitting through this, there, there's often a phenomenon. Uh, yeah, yeah, phenomenon. There we are. Where people will sit down and they'll get through the first hundred pages like it's nothing. They'll, they'll sit down and read the first hundred pages. 
Then the second 100 pages, they'll kind of slow down a bit. Third 100 pages, they'll read it not as much. And then the fourth and fifth and sixth and so on and so forth, they'll kind of just say, oh, great, I've got to pick that up again. Oh, great, I've so long to go. It's kind of like Sisyphus. It's like, oh, shit, there's so much further I've got to go. And so, how do you get through large books without losing morale? And that is the secondary book system. This was uh, first recommended to me by a friend, and they um, changed my life with it. So whereas I will read, for every two or three philosophy books, I'll read a fiction book. If I pick up something like this, or Les Mis, or Don Quixote... I will also pick up at the same time a fiction book like War of the Worlds. Small things, probably about 100, 100 to 200 pages. And so what I do is this is the primary and this is the secondary. And so when I'm at home, I will read this because I'm not carrying this around with me to college in my bag. It's too big. So when I'm at home... During breakfast, I read. So during breakfast, I will read this. I'll probably get around 30 pages done of this during breakfast. Then when I'm home and I read for around an hour in my chair, uh, I will read this. So whenever I'm home, I read this. Meanwhile, while I'm on the bus or on the train or even just at college during lunch, I will read this. And so then that means that while I'm reading this, it's a new, fresh lease of life. Now, again, this is like, uh, how many pages? 170. So I could probably get this done in a day. But because, again, I annotate things, it'll probably take me two days. So by the time I finish this, I've read probably about three to four books like this. And so in a week, I've now read five books in a week. Now... If you didn't know already, now this is, oh God, I'm going to sound like an infomercial right now. For the past few months, I've been working on a book, uh, an academic essay called Recognition in Modern Media. And I'm just about at the final stages of it, which I'm, re I'm really happy about. It's, it's odd actually seeing it finished and all in things. And at the moment, it's postponed because... Uh, of financial reasons it's costing a lot more than what i thought it would be so it's going to be about another two or three months before it's out but i do post daily updates of it on my instagram so there'll be a link for that in the description and if you'd like to read some more in the meantime of my own works for free then i'll leave a few links for that in the description below as well and so until next time i, I just say keep reading Keep reading, keep writing, keep doing whatever you're doing. And, and please, it's send me some pictures of what you're reading on Instagram. I'd, I'd love to see and get some great ideas of it. So I will see you in the next one. Ciao. And so I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.